High quality streaming service Cobuzz is giving back to the music community and supporting artists. Click the link in the video description box below to sign up for your free trial now. What's the difference between a server and a streamer? Many of you will have seen this before. This is a Sonos Connect, discontinued now. But it, this is a streamer. It connects to a hi-fi system using analog outputs or to a DAC using digital outputs. But it sits in the rack and it catches streams from the cloud. And the great thing about Sonos is it supports many, many, many different kinds of streaming services. Probably the, the biggest selection in the world. So this sits in the rack. If we want to stream our downloads to this, so the music that we have on computers and things like that, we have to install the Sonos application on a Windows machine or on a Mac where the downloads live. And then we use the Sonos app to tell the server what to send to this. So I've got a, a Windows PC in my kitchen, which I use for this sometimes, and I can use my phone as a remote control to tell that Windows PC what to send to Sonos. But that's only for download. Streaming services come straight from the cloud to this. Now the Aurelic Aries Mini, which I've got connected into my rack behind me here, is a bit like a Sonos Connect. It's a streamer. It does Tidal, Kobos, but it doesn't do all the other streaming services that Sonos does. What it does offer is better sound quality, much better sound quality. And it works in a similar way, like you can use the app as a remote control to pull down Tidal and Kobo streams and Spotify Connect. But if you want to stream your downloads, you need to have a UPnP server set up. So also on my Windows machine in the kitchen, I've got Minim server running, which is a UPnP server, and that will send out my downloads to the Aries Mini whenever I call them up, <laughs> whenever I call them up on my phone. So I use the Lightning DS app. In fact, no, I shouldn't really pull this phone up because this is Android and Lightning DS only supports iPhones. So basically you need an iPhone to do that. So that's the Aries Mini. Now the thing is, is like the Sonos app that runs on my Windows PC or the Minim server app that runs on the same PC. This is server software that can push out music whenever I call it up on a mobile phone to send it to the streamer. And it also manages the library and it allows us to navigate the, uh, the downloads that we have stored on that device. But if we want, say, like the Aries Mini to do Rune, then I could also install the Rune software on the Windows PC, and then it would index the library and then send it out using the Rune app running on our phone. It would send it out from the Windows PC to the Aries Mini. So again, the server is what sends out the streams. Rune is also a bit different to Sonos in that if you want to stream Tidal or Kobos, which Rune supports and integrates very tightly, you need to have the Rune core running on a machine somewhere on your network. It doesn't have to be in the rack. It can be you know, in the kitchen like I have. So it just manages the streams, but it also manages the streaming service streams as well. So the core pulls down the Kobo stream or the Tidal stream pulls it down and sends it across the network to our Rune Ready device in the rack, in this case, the Aurelic Aries Mini. But Rune can also stream to Sonos devices as well. So, but that's another story for a different day. If I don't want the hassle of using a Windows PC and all that kind of nonsense, sometimes I use my Rune Nucleus, which is a dedicated Linux computer and a very nice chassis that is for cash rich, time poor people because it's a plug and play appliance. You turn it on, connect a hard drive, Rune is running on it, and it's ready to go. So then you can just pull up the app on a phone, stream from it to a Rune ready device in the rack. Simple. But again, it's a server. The Nucleus is a server. It serves files. This is the Blue Sound Node 2i. Like the Aries Mini, 
Like the Sonos, it also connects to a hi-fi system using analog or digital outputs. And like the Aries Mini, this sounds much better than a Sonos device. Now this, I can stream to this using UPnP or Rune. So my Windows PC or my Rune Nucleus as servers can stream from the kitchen to here. Inside this little box is a Raspberry Pi, and on top of it is a hat which has digital outputs here. But that's not really the point of this. Basically, whatever software I put on the micro SD card in here determines the role of this Raspberry Pi. So at the moment, I have something called Pi Core Player installed on here. So this acts as a squeeze box. So it could talk to a Logitech media server software installed on the Windows PC in the kitchen. But if I swap out the software, I burn another operating system onto this micro SD card, it could talk to the Rune Nucleus, or alternatively, it could talk to a UPnP server running on the Windows PC. So whatever I put on the micro SD card determines what kind of streamer this is. But it is a streamer, it sits in the rack, you connect it digitally to, the, to a DAC here, or if you don't have the hat on top, you can use one of the USB ports. So all three of these are network streamers. They live in the rack behind us, they connect to an audio system, they play catch on whatever their corresponding server gives them. And those corresponding servers can live anywhere in the house. I mean, mine are in my kitchen. As long as they're connected to my router, so basically on the same network as these, then that network is what enables the connection between the two. So we have servers somewhere else, these in the rack, and the servers serve the files to these devices, or some of them pull from the cloud directly, but that's, that's a story for a different day. But these are streamers, and those things in my kitchen are servers. Simple, right? So this is the Inuus Zenith SE. It has a USB output on the back, so we can connect it to our hi-fi rack. I've got to put it down, it's too heavy. Um, this is probably one of the best streamers in the world, best sounding streamers in the world. But the funny thing is, is this also contains server software. So effectively it can stream to itself. So the server software inside streams to the internal, let's call it a sound card for simplicity's sake. This can stream to itself. This is what I call a server streamer. So it's an all in one setup. So I just pulled this from my kitchen. This is the Windows PC that I was talking about. Now I could also have this set up as a server streamer for Rune or for UPnP or for Squeezebox emulation. And then this could live in my rack behind me here as a server streamer. This is the, the Rune Nucleus just pulled from the kitchen. But yeah, it has a USB output on the back. So again, if I wanted to, this could live in the rack. It could stream to itself, so a Rune server streaming to a Rune endpoint inside. And this would just be a, a self-sufficient server streamer, again, that could live in the rack. So some things are server streamers. And this is where I wanted to get to, because my next video in this series is going to be about a very specific server streamer setup. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I forgot to mention that the Aries, the Aries Mini can also be a server streamer because you can put a hard drive yeah. in its undercarriage and it right, can right. sit as a server streamer, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's, that's just a minor detail. Yeah. If you liked this video, if you thought it was in any way informative from a beginner's perspective, not talking about sound quality in this video, never wanted to. I'm not going to talk about sound quality in the comment section either. Just take this for like just being a basic overview video that helps beginners. That was the intent here. If you dig that, give us a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. I think I have to ask you to click the bell as well. I don't know why you have to click subscribe and the bell for notifications, but that seems to be the way that YouTube works. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.